everyone, this is Suzanne and God Crochet and Chatter. Welcome back. It is a cold day in Rochester, Michigan. It's like 45 out there today and it is cold. I woke up this morning and I was freezing. So I nuzzled up to my hubby and grabbed some warmth out of his body. And then he jumped out of bed and threw another blanket on for us. Uh, that was much better. But I've been so cold all day. So I put my little robe on here and trying to drink lots of warm tea to try to keep warm. Uh, I don't like when the weather fluctuates. All right, in, in a little while, I got the town comfort done for the 4th of July giveaway. Woo, it turned out pretty. We'll get to that a little bit later. All right, first of all, let's get to our trivia question. Let, yesterday, name the sister-in-law of Oprah. If you said Ruth, you got it, and many of you did. All right, next question. What is the name of the town to which two men were traveling who met the resurrected Jesus? Tell me what town that was. Shouldn't be too hard. Okay, we're going to talk about a couple of things today. About Saul's um, coronation. Um, he has now been made king <clears throat> over Israel. <clears throat> and learning to live in God's presence. Sorry for my voice today. I don't know if I have a little bit of cold or not. Kind of raspy. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so Samuel says, "I have made a king over you, over you," and Saul's integrity was very high. He reminded them of the history of how God acted righteous to them when the Lord was king over your life. You demanded a king like other nations. And he went all through that with them again. And they were all like, what have we done? Will God forgive us? You know, what, what, what do we need to do? And he responds to them, do not turn aside. For when you would go after empty things, which can not profit or deliver, for they are nothing. As for me, Saul is saying this. Far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord, ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and right way. Now, there's some lessons here that he's giving instruction on how to keep out of things under the king that would lead them astray into pagan worship, the neighboring surrounding neighbors that are pagans. Um, you know, don't go there. Don't get mixed up with bad people. And he also said, I'm not going to cease praying for you. That I would sin against God if I did that. And we need to be that way with people in our lives. Sometimes people hurt you. Sometimes other Christians are out there not behaving like they should. Taking the Lord's name in vain. Dropping the F word. Um, posting things that have um, derogatory slanders about God, like, oh, my holy God, and uh, uh, I even hate say saying it. And we should not be doing that. We should not post anything that has things in it that would make other Christians cringe a little bit. I do it all the time. I see it all the time on Facebook, these people posting Christian things, and all of a sudden something pops up like OMG in it or something like that. And it's like, oh, really? So, yeah. But we got we to gotta pray for these people. Because sometimes people just don't think, do they? Just like the children of Israel. They rashly acted, and now they're going, oh, we got to back swim. <laughs> we gotta, what are you going to do? So, we got to be patient with people. I would want people to be patient with me and help me to grow and to encourage me. All right, learning to live in God's presence. There was a big war, and the men of Israel had been hard-pressed that day. And Samuel rashly forbid them food to eat. Now, here you have a huge army fighting. I imagine it took a great amount of strength wielding those heavy swords and wearing that heavy armor. They're exhausted. They're famished. 
And, you know, the, the saying is true. A soldier travels on his stomach, so to speak. You got to feed them. Otherwise, they become weak and faint. And they did. Well, Jonathan ate the honey. He did not know of the decree that the order would be from God that he would be killed. And, and Samuel said, even if it's my son, he shall be killed. And Sam, Jonathan says, see, my eyes are bright because I've tasted a little honey. Better than to serve those he led, saw imposed on them, and things did not go well. And it's true. Have you ever been really tired a little bit? And when you ate a little bit of food, you just immediately felt refreshed? Like, wow, I guess I needed that fuel for energy to, so I could keep pressing on and not become faint and weak. It's kind of a odd moment that Samuel would rashly act this way, not realizing that. After striking down more enemies, they were extremely hungry to the point they pounced on the spoil. They took the sheep, the oxen, and the calves. They slaughtered them, and they ate not only the meat, but the blood. Now, that was strictly forbidden. This was against God. For the people to consume their food appropriately, lots were cast, and it fell on Jonathan. And Jonathan confessed. Saul was ready to kill him, but the people intervened. Now, Saul did kind of backtrack and showed them how to cook the meat, prepare it, so that they would not sin. Saul, Saul sought to do things on his own. Jonathan went out to see what God might do while Saul and his army was in stasis. Kind of like, what are we going to do? In the battle, Jonathan rejoiced in the victory given. He ate honey and he enjoyed it. We can enjoy our victories in Jesus. We can enjoy when we overcome something, when through our teaching somebody comes to Christ or is encouraged to study. Ah, that's a wonderful thing to taste that sweetness. Saul made rash vows and seemingly attempts to manipulate God. Rather than rejoice in victory, he imposes a fast on his people that ultimately leads them to sin. We can't, we can't lead people to sin. You know, if somebody's hungry and and our means to feed them and help them, you know, you need to take care of the need first, and then we can preach Jesus to them. We send people away hungry or cold. That's all they're going to think about until that need is met. Then they're going to be refreshed. And say, okay, I'm ready to listen. I can too often be like Saul. Cower in fear or press ahead with my own plan rather than seek God's counsel. It's easy to think that life is all about us and our performance to make up our own theory of how things are, are rather than living God's truth. And we need to live in God's truth every single day of our life. And there's some scriptures here in 2 Peter 1, 3 through 8. I'm going to read this to you. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, goodness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will be without excuse. Isn't that great? God is good. 
every single day to us. And we need to rejoice in those victories because we're on a big battleground here. We're fighting tooth and nail every day for truth to be revealed through the scriptures. And when we have a victory, I'm going to go eat a donut. <laughs> All right, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed that devotion today. I'm sorry for my raspy voice today. I think I might have a little bit of sniffles today. Like I said, it was cold. All righty. As you know, I got the dishcloth done for my 4th of July giveaway. In fact, I was I had one of these knit dishcloths I've been using for like a long time. Finally gave up the go, so I quick whipped me up another one. And I just tested it today. And oh, it's always nice to have one that's fresh and, you know, it just wiped up the counter. So absolutely fantastic. I, I'm really enjoying making these. All right, are you ready for the towel? Do, do, do. <laughs> I get so excited, I can't help myself. All right, here it is. Ready? Do, 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 da, da, da. How about this? Look at that. Let me stand up, see if I can get it all in the picture. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I think this turned out absolutely wonderful. I had to switch. My design, I took it all the way back out to here, in fact, because the pattern that I was using, this wasn't lining up right and just didn't show it nice. And I will put the link down below for this beautiful pattern. I'm telling you, I made this, I made this this morning. I tore the one that I had going back down to the beginning, and then I did this pattern, and I had this done within... 20 minutes maybe. I mean, it went super fast. So I will put that down in the drop-down box below that you can add to your crochet towel topper um, patterns. I've got a few more I'm going to be testing out. This one I found, um, it's a crocheted dress on top, but how it goes, you open your towel and you cut it in half, and then you crochet this dress and it's kind of connected in two pieces and you sew it and, it, and then it kind of, the towel opens up and hangs over and the dress hangs down. It's so cute. So I ordered the towels and I ordered the pattern. So when I get that in, I'll be working on that and I will show it to you when I get that done. It is so adorable. But this here to go quick and fast and easy, I am highly recommending this pattern. So that's what I've got so far. I'm still working on a couple more things for the 4th of July giveaway. And Chris did respond back. She's so excited that she won the one year giveaway and we're very happy for her. All right, everyone. It's been 13 minutes. I guess I better close down for today. I love each and every one of you. You have a blessed day in the Lord. And if it's cold where you are, please stay warm. <laughs> <laughs> or send me some heat, right? All right, everyone. Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. And God, crochet and chatter. Bye.